So in this e-content, we are going to see the methods of integration. So the various methods of integration are substitution, decomposition into a sum, integration by parts and successive reduction. So in this e-content, we are mainly going to see about integrating values by means of substitution. So in the first method, we will see about integrating functions which are in the linear form. That is which are in the form f of ax plus b. So over here the substitution will be given for ax plus b. It is given as t. So on differentiating 1, you will get a dx is equal to dt where b is a constant. And differentiation of a constant will be 0. Therefore integral f of ax plus b to dx will be integral f of t into the value of dx is 1 by a into dt. So the integral reduces to 1 by a into integral f of t dt which reduces into a simpler form. Second one, integration of irrational functions of the form a squared plus or minus x squared. So initially we are going to integrate dx by root of a squared minus x squared. So we are going to find the relevant substitution for x so that the radical is removed. The function from the radical sign should be removed. So if we put x is equal to a sine theta, the denominator will be reduced to a squared into 1 minus sine squared theta. So we will get root of a squared cos squared theta. So therefore the root can be removed. So we will put x is equal to a sine theta. So on differentiating 1 with respect to x we will get dx is equal to a cos theta into d theta. So substituting the value of x and dx in the given integral, we will get a cos theta in the numerator and as well as in the denominator. So therefore a cos theta gets cancelled and we will get integral d theta which is nothing but theta. And the value of theta has been calculated as this nothing but sine inverse x by a. So similarly we can also evaluate integral dx by root of a squared plus x squared. So over here if we substitute x is equal to a sine h theta we can remove the function from the radical sign. So over here x is a sine h theta on integrating it we will get dx is equal to a cos h theta. Substituting the value of x and dx in the given problem we will get a cos h theta in the numerator and in the numerator denominator. So we will have d theta finally and if we integrate it we will have theta which is nothing but sin h inverse x by a. Similarly we can also evaluate the value of integral dx by root of x squared minus a squared. So over here if we put x is equal to a cos h theta the denominator will be reduced to a squared cos h squared theta minus 1. So on changing the whole integral in terms of theta, we get a sin h theta d theta in the numerator and root of a square cos h square theta minus 1 in the denominator. So over here also we've got the same value a sin h theta in the numerator as well as denominator which reduces to integral d theta. So theta is nothing but cos h in plus x by a. So in this way we can find the integral value of irrational functions. Next one, we have got to integrate a function which is of the form f of x the whole bar n into f dash of x. That is, the function has been raised to a power and we are having its derivative. So over here we are substituting a value for the functions. That is, f of x is substituted by a value t. We are changing the whole integral in terms of so on differentiating f of x we get f dash of x dx is equal to dt. So the given problem becomes t bar n into dt which becomes t bar n plus 1 divided by n plus 1. So substituting the value for t which is f of x we get the required value for the integral. The next one is the most important one. We are having the 
function in the denominator and its derivative in the numerator. So over here, if we put f of x is equal to 1 and differentiate it with respect to x, we'll get f dash of x dx is equal to dy. So the given problem reduces to dy by y, which is log y. So y is nothing but f of x. So this is one of the important results. If you copy function in the denominator, its derivative in the numerator, then it reduces to log of f of x. Next one, we are going to integrate functions which are of the form 1 by a plus b cos x plus c sin x. So, the same substitutions can be and can be taken over for 1 by a plus b cos x and 1 by a plus b sin x also. So, over here we are evaluating integral dx by a plus b cos x plus c sin x. So, we know that cos x has got a diplomatic formula 1 minus tan squared x by 2 divided by 1 plus tan x by 2 and sin x is 2 tan squared x by 2 by 1 plus tan squared x by 2. In order to simplify the problem, we will put d is equal to tan x by 2. So, if we differentiate this value, we will get dt. If we differentiate tan x by 2, we will get 1 by 2 into secant squared x by 2 into dx. We know secant squared x by 2 is 1 plus tan squared x by 2. So, from this, we can get the value of dx as 2 dt by 1 plus tan squared x by 2. So, now, we are going to use the substitution for dx cos x and sin x. So instead of tan x by 2, I am substituting the value as t. So dx becomes 2 dt by 1 plus t squared. Cos x becomes 1 minus t squared by 1 plus t squared. And sin x becomes 2 t by 1 plus t squared. So if I substitute these values in dx by a plus b cos x plus c sin x, we are having 1 plus t squared as a common denominator in the numerator as well as the denominator. So it gets cancelled. And you are having 2 dt in the numerator and a quadratic function in the denominator. So I am reducing the denominator in the form of a squared plus x squared. So over here we can have two formulas. So either a can be less than b or a can be greater than b. If at all a is greater than b, then the integral reduces to dx by a squared plus x squared. So in this case the formula is 1 by a tan inverse x by a. So we will get the first form. So if at all a is less than b, then the formula reduces to dx by a squared minus x squared. So the formula will be 1 by 2a log of a plus x by a minus x. So over here the values of a and x are very large. But while doing problems it will be very simple and easy. So these are the few methods which are based on substitution. Thank you.